What is up everyone? I am TST's The Mudman. Last week I had some computer issues, but this week I'm back and it's time to figure out what we are going to play this weekend ranked in Gods Unchained. So let's start things off as we usually do. We are on GUDEX.com um, looking at God popularity at the Mythic Meta over the past seven days. And as you can see, we have Light at the top slot just under 30% of the meta over the past week. Almost a third of all games have been light. Uh, after that we have Magic, Nature, Deception, and then Death and War at the bottom. So let's go over each god and what their best slash most popular archetypes are so you know what you'll be facing this week as you queue into your games. So Light, Light's most popular archetype is definitely Zoolite. Control Light is also very very good. But because of the nature of control decks and gods unchained, control decks are way more expensive and therefore way less common. So you'll be seeing lots of zoo light, lots of creatures, lots of protected, lots of buffs, that type of stuff. Uh, magic, like we said before, is very versatile. You have your choice of multiple different combo decks. You can be control magic. You can even be tempo magic. But realistically, if you want to be a tempo deck this week, you should probably be light. So expect uh, control magic and maybe some combo magic. Uh, nature is always aggressive nature. It could be you know, full-blown aggression. It could be mid-range leaning towards aggression. But it's always an aggressive you know, build in general. Nature is not in a particularly great spot in the meta right now. It's pretty popular, mainly because there are so many players who only play nature. But it just sort of does a worse job at being like a zoo deck than light does. It can't control the board as well as magic. It's not as aggressive as deception nature is just really weak right now so spoiler alert there's no nature deck this week to go over it's just not worth playing then we have deception which was the strongest god two weeks ago but got nerfed uh aggro deception was the best god before or was the best uh, archetype for this god before it's still quite strong just nowhere near as good as before it's also still the most popular deception archetype so when you queue into deception you'll probably be seeing aggro deception however like light it is a uh, also has a very strong control archetype, so you're gonna want to look up your opponent's deck when you queue into Deception to see what they're working with. Uh, War is controlly or mid rangey control oriented, like relic based war for the most part. It's gonna be mid range control or full blown control because War has a lot of relics, a lot of blitz creatures, a lot of twin strike blitz creatures, which are really good at dealing with Light's board state, which is why Light. Or, which is why War and Light are the only two gods currently with a positive win rate overall, because Light's the best god and the most popular, and War is just very well equipped to deal with them. Uh, death is the least popular god. When you run into Death, it'll most likely be Heirloom Death. It may be the least popular god, but Heirlooms are never you know, that weak. Um, if you run into any Death decks, you know, be wary of Milling, be wary of Sleep, or you know, just Anubians in general, but you probably won't run into any Death decks, so no reason to worry about that. But now that we've gone over the meta a bit, let's look at some specific deck lists that you might want to play this weekend ranked. Alright, so let's start things off with the most popular and best god in light. I've got three different light lists to show you guys today. We're going to start off with aggro light because it is the most popular archetype in the game. This is the best performing list of last weekend. It was made by a couple of question marks. And we're going to go over aggro light extremely quickly because we've gone over aggro light a ton of times on this channel. It's a fairly linear deck in general. You play, you spend your first couple of turns just playing as many like cheap creatures as you can, going as wide as possible, and then buffing them all up with Radiant Dawn, again with a Holy Enchanter, again with Prayer of the Desperate, and then finally with Asterius. This deck even has a single copy of Canonize for some single target buff action. You know, it's fairly simple. Play a bunch of creatures, buff a bunch of creatures, make them hard to remove, and then kill your opponent. Um, light, or aggro light, rather, is very strong right now. Very simple list, very quick list. If you want to be very successful this weekend in, the, you know, in a fast manner, then a uh, zoo light is definitely a good list to go with. But that's about it for the aggro side of light. Let's look at our first control list. The uh, first control light deck I want to talk about was made by Ryan, the pioneer of control light. And watch out, everybody else, because Ryan owns two demos now. Nobody stands a chance. And uh, Light may not have a lot of great board clears, but they do have excellent board stall mechanics. And Ryan has packed pretty much all of them into this deck. He has two copies of Line in the Sand, which is effectively sleep but better, because you can't wake anything up from Line in the Sand. We have two copies of Lips are Sealed, which puts creatures essentially to sleep for multiple turns. So that's really great. 
Um, we have two copies of Lysander's Mercy, which is essentially Light's version of Apocalypse Now. It's far, far weaker than Apocalypse Now, obviously. You don't gain any favor from playing Lysander's Mercy. You don't actually destroy anything. But you can take any board, regardless of afterlife, your wards, or protecteds, or armors, or what have you, and just say, not today. And just put all those creatures back in, onto the bottom of the deck. You know, very effective stall mechanic, and this deck is all about stalling because it has the infinite value generation loop of Radiant and Bombers plus Inescapable Duty. Inescapable Duty, I'm sure everyone is aware of it by now. It's a three mana card. You pull a creature from your void to your hand and give it plus two, plus two, or you can empower three, making it a six mana card, and just do that twice. So you. You can play a Radiant Bomber to get more Inescapable Duties. You can play your Inescapable Duty to get more Radiant Bombers. And then just keep doing it indefinitely. Eventually you'll be in a situation where you'll be picking up probably a Radiant Bomber plus whatever you want every single turn, which will be enough to end most games. It's, you know, an infinite value loop. It's hard for control decks to stop that. And if you're able to stall out your aggro opponent long enough, then you'll be able to just beat them with enough big creatures over time. Um, Ryan has proven time and time again that Control Light is incredibly strong. This Stally variant works very, very well. So if you're in for some long, grindy matchups and a Control-style light list like this could be great for you, but that's not the last Control Light list to discuss. We also have this Control Light list made by J-Rock, which is actually wildly different from Ryan's version. Very rarely do two different lists of the same archetype vary this much. J-Rock has taken out all of the order cards, or pretty much all the order cards. He still has Cern, as well as an Inquisitor and Foreman, of course. But he's taken out the Lips are Sealed, he's taken out the Divine Judgments, he's removed the Lines in the Sands. Um, and in lieu of all those cards, he has more, like, um, standalone strong cards, as well as single target removal, and tech cards as well. So let's look at the tech cards first, because that's you know, the easiest. He obviously has one Iron Tooth Goblin, which is great for destroying relics. Uh, Palaces Wands, uh, Lightning Talismans, Necro Scepters, Skull Scepters, what have you. There's always relics floating around, even, you know, maces. There's oftentimes relics in people's decks, and destroying them is very good. We also have a single copy of Gleamweaver in here, which is obviously very good against Anubians, but Anubians aren't very popular. Gleamweaver is also exceptional in the mirror match. If you can remove your uh, Control Light opponent's inescapable duties or Radiant Embalmers, then you turn off their infinite value loop, and you still have your infinite value loop, pretty much guaranteeing you win those mirror matches. And if you're thinking there's only one Gleam Weaver, how am I going to remove all four of those cards from my, you know, light opponent's deck? You never have just one copy of any single creature in Control Light. You can have them indefinitely with that aforementioned Radiant Bomber plus Inescapable Duty combo. Uh, let's see. Uh, J-Rock also has a copy of the uh, of Cudgel. You know, one of life's one mana 2-2 two, two relics, which is really great in the early game for not only controlling the board, but just giving you something to do on turn 1 when you go first, so you don't have to expend a pip. Um, he also has the new Light's Levy, as opposed to the old Light's Levy. Ryan's list had the old Light's Levy. Personally, I am a fan of this one, because it's a creature, which means in a pinch you can pull it back with an inescapable duty, and then have a Light's Levy that makes you a 3-3 and a 1-1. One, one. You know, if you ever need that to get rid of some extra Pyramid Wardens or whatever. Um, but, you know, either way, if you want to throw in regular Lights Levy, it's fine as well. Uh, let's see, we've also got two copies of Imperious Smite, which can just destroy a big creature. Uh, we have a copy of Master of Indulgence, which pairs very nicely with that aforementioned Cudgel, or a Vanguard Axe to just destroy pretty much any sized creature. Uh, let's see, I definitely want to point out Kaya in this deck. I'm a big fan of Kaya in pretty much all Light lists. Like we said in the beginning of the video, Light doesn't really have comeback mechanics. Um, and Kaya, although she is not the most consistent comeback mechanic, she can be AoE damage in a pinch, she can be surprise burst damage, and it's just a very high impact card to, you know, take back multiple times through your inescapable duty. Uh, it's always fun to beat your opponent by spending 9 mana playing inescapable duty, getting Kaya, and playing Kaya for surprise 9 damage. Um, yeah, but the main takeaway from these two control light lists is control light is also very strong. There's a lot of different directions you can take them. Um, whether you go with a more tempo and creature-oriented list like J-Rocks or a more stall-oriented list like Ryan's, both of them will perform very well. Uh, Light is the strongest god for a reason. Both its aggro and control archetypes are very good, so it should, it should definitely be a, you know, a deck you consider playing this weekend ranked event. Alright, now let's move on to Magic. I've got two different Magic decks for you, a Control Magic list and a Combo Magic list. Let's start things off with Control. This list was made by Naka. 
uh, it's a very simple uh, control magic list. You keep the board clear in the early game, you eventually survive until you have 6, 7, or 8 mana, and then you play big creatures like your dragon, your city planner, your helmna, or your healing elite to win the game. This deck has a ton of different board clears and different you know, removal spells. Blizzard Bolt destroys an early game creature. Magnetic Blast in combination with Spell Boost is a small bit of AoE. Same thing is true with Tracking Bolt. We have two copies of Unannounced Arrival, two copies of Shape Blast, two copies of Unbound Flames. This deck will have no problem clearing the board over and over and over again to survive to those aforementioned big beat stick cards. And then one thing I would definitely like to mention is the two copies of Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is a card that I really like in Control Magic lists. Um, in an aggro matchup, you can turn something you know, very small, like a Bibliomaniac, into like a Wetlands Ogre for some extra tempo. And in those games, you get to the late game like you intend to. Um, taking like a value trade with something like a City Planner and then turning it into an 8-drop is you know, absolutely game-winning. Same thing is true with Helmna. There is a lot of turns in between 7 and 8 mana in God's Unchained, so if you can take a value trade with a 7 drop and then turn them into an 8 drop, no one is going to have a heart, is going to have an easy time dealing with that. Uh, Control Magic is you know, a very consistent archetype. If you run into a lot of aggressive decks, you should fare pretty well. But uh, you know, a deck like this is fairly simple, so let's jump right into the Control deck. This is a Dralimar combo deck, or sorry, a con combo deck. This is a Dralimar combo deck made by single question mark. And uh, with Control Light being in the meta, with Control Magic being in the meta, with Control and Midrange War becoming more popular, that opens the door for you know inevitable win condition decks like Dralmar to really shine. Um, something like War or Light has a really hard time dealing with Dralmar. War has that scout card that can pull it out of your opponent's hand. It can also pull like a helpful Aether Fox out of the hand, which can be game winning. But if you do pull a Dralmar, the scout can't kill the Dralimar, so you have to like pair the scout with like a relic hit or you know something else in order to actually get rid of the Dralimar, so it's not a great option. And then of course Control Light has Odessa, but it's not like Odessa's ever a surprise. The Control Light player plays Odessa, the magic opponent destroys the Odessa instead of playing Dralimar and then just does the turn later. So Odessa doesn't really stop Dralimar either. The fact of the matter is Dralimar should be performing fairly well uh, you know, for this weekend ranked event if it does lean more anti um, zoo light than pure zoo light and uh, I'm not going to go over the combo too in depth because we've done it so many times I do want to harp on one point that I always mention when we talk about Dralimar magic you do need to reduce something with helpful Aether Fox it does not need to be the Aether Snaps it can be any spell that costs three you can even do it with um here it is form of wisdom form of wisdom is just a better version of Aether Fox for the most part but if you reduce a charm to zero, if you reduce a librarian's prayer to zero, or recovered knowledge, all of that works fine. You play your Dralimar, and then whatever you reduced, and now you have infinite mana. Then you draw the rest of your deck. If you somehow haven't won by then, you just play your magic inks on top of magic inks until you inevitably win. If you see the meta is leaning towards slower decks, then Dralimar is definitely going to be a heavy hitter. So uh, keep an eye on the meta, and if it ends up being Dralimar favored, you might definitely want to consider Dralimar this weekend ranked event. And now we have Aggro Deception. Aggro Deception was the best deck in the game two weeks ago. However, both Selfless Guildmate and Shadow Step Backstabber have been nerfed. But don't worry, 40 till 5 has proven Aggro Deception is still a very powerful archetype. He performed extremely well last weekend ranked event. Uh, Selfless Guildmate used to buff a creature for 3 strength, now it's just 2. Still a great card. Um, Shadow Step Backstabber was completely changed. It used to steal stats, now its text reads something along the lines of Don't put me in your deck. So 40 till 5 has replaced that 1 mana guild creature with a new 1 mana guild creature in Contract Broker, which is a 1 mana 2 1 that summons a 1 1 ro rogue skulker that attacks the weakest enemy creature. Um, which is, you know, just decent on its own. On turn one, you can play it for a 3-2, you know, and over two bodies, which is a very decent thing. In, like, a mirror match, it's a very good way to deal with something like a Shadow of Lethanon. It's just a fine card in general, and of course, it's a one-mana guild creature, which pairs very nicely with a Fermentari Instigator. And losing out on Shadow Step Backstabber, 40 till 5 has very wisely removed his, um, Bound by her will, since it's going to be harder to get creatures' strength down to uh, just one. And now he only runs two copies of Umber Arrow. Getting creatures attacked down to two is much more reasonable. We do still have two copies of Beguiling Blade, after all. 
But then besides that, it's really the exact same as like your average aggro deception decks that you remember from two weeks ago. You know, we have lots of strong hidden creatures, lots of ways to buff their attack up with that Dark Knives, with the aforementioned uh, Selfless Guildmate. We have Vermintari Instigators to you know, refill your hand after you play all those guild cards. We have two copies of Uncanny Rogue, which is very nice to pair with one of your hidden creatures to give it deadly and destroy something big. It also pairs nicely with the creatures that Madame Denholm makes for you. And uh, yeah, besides that, this is just a, an aggressive deck. It ignores its opponent's side of the board for the most part. It hides its creature, so it forces its opponent to ignore its side of the board, and it just goes face until it hopefully wins. Uh, Aggro Deception is definitely not as strong as it was two weeks ago, but it's definitely still good. It's definitely still fast, so if you want to finish your weekend ranked in under two hours, this is definitely the list for you. All right, next up we have Control War. This Control War list was made by Philosoraptor. Uh, Philosoraptor came in second place this weekend ranked event playing Control War. It obviously wasn't this deck. As you can see, it only has four games to its name. But uh, the reason I picked this war deck to feature is the construction of this war list is just saying, not today, Zulite opponents. It is full of just everything war has to stop them. It has all the blitz creatures you can ask for. You know, we have tavern brawlers, we have Viking longships, we have the orcish elites, we have ravenous chimeras, uh, we have Grendel. Yeah, um, let's see, we have all, all the pretty much all the healing that war has access to. We have the grand halls. That aforementioned Chimera, two copies of Demo, uh, Helmna, excellent board clears with the Carnage Sweep as well as Soul Survivor. Both AoE board clears pair extremely nicely with Leviathan Hunter. Obviously, Leviathan Hunter making a relic for just one mana is great with Carnage Sweep, but also being able to play Leviathan Hunter and then pip Soul Survivor on six mana is you know, an excellent board clear as well. So this deck is, oh, it also, it even has a Kaya for even more board clear action against those Zulite opponents. Um, so against Zulite, this deck should be heavily favored. And we can see he also has one copy of Strength and Numbers. I imagine so he has a chance against Control Light. Um, Strength and Numbers obviously is like a big value swing turn. You get a bunch of big war creatures in your hand that you can play and hopefully overwhelm your opponent. However, outvaluing Control Light is pretty much impossible considering they can play as many Radiant Bombers plus whatever else they want indefinitely until the game ends. So Strength and Numbers is not going to guarantee you a victory against Control Light. You're going to have to high roll on the Strength and Numbers. You're going to have to maybe, maybe they miss on their inescapable duty, but it's something that you can do in the late game if your demos and helmets aren't enough to close it out. But uh, essentially speaking, this deck is just tailor-made to beat Zulite, so if you are sick of seeing all those Zulite decks on the ladder, then this could be a great counter pick for you. Alright, and last up we have Anubian Death. This Anubian Death list was made by J-Rock. Uh, Anubians aren't the best archetype in the, you know, in the game right now. But if you really want to play Anubians this weekend, I think you should definitely go with an Anubian deck that has the like Cannabis Quarter and Afterlife package. At the moment, the meta is pretty diverse in the sense that there are aggro decks, control decks, combo decks, and mid-range decks. And the Anubian decks that have the Afterlife package have uh, the best versatility against like multiple different archetypes. If you're playing against an aggressive deck, you can use your Siren of the Graves as well as you know that Cannabis Quarter to get lots and lots of sleep down so you can survive long enough to kill them. When you're playing against control decks or combo decks, then you can play things like V-Rock as well as Burrowing Scarab with Canvic Hoarder to mill out their combo pieces or just their big high-value control pieces. Obviously, Sulfuric Rain is excellent in combination with any of those things. It's great for milling opponents. It's also great for destroying your own Siren of the Graves when you're playing against you know, aggressive opponents. Um, if you want to like speed up the deck, maybe give yourself a better matchup against those uh, Zoo Light opponents, or even Control Light, you know, just want to end the game faster, you might want to take out the two demos and put into Skull Scepter, so you can capitalize even further off destroying your own creatures. So, uh, yeah, like I said in the beginning, Anubians aren't the best right now, but if you want to play Anubians, the Afterlife package is definitely the, uh, the package you want to throw into your deck. And, uh, yeah, that is about it for the Anubians. Alright, so it is conclusion time. We've looked at all the gods. We've thought about the meta. What should we play this weekend ranked in Gods Unchained? Well, the answer is clear. Some variation of light. Zoo light is great. Control light is slightly better. But definitely keep in mind, if you see the meta is becoming more control-oriented, 
you might want to swap on over to Dralimar. But whatever you play, make sure you have fun. Tell us how you did in the TST Discord, and have a wonderful day. Hey, you! Did you know that subscribing to the TST YouTube channel will increase your win rate by 6.9%? So what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. And while you're at it, equip Scythe the Harvest and attack the like button directly in the face. Bye bye